into the shadows of chaos. The light of the world steps from the silence of death. The word of God breaks free for the emptiness of our souls. The bread of the world is broken. Good afternoon and welcome to our last hour service for this most solemn of festivals. We, this afternoon, will be tracing Jesus's last 24 hours during this, the last hour before his death. Some believe that the passion story in Mark's gospel was indeed written as an Easter vigil for early Christians to enable them to relive the last day of our Lord's life. And so we start at 6 p.m. on Thursday evening. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. It was at a table that the story began a people longing for freedom. A meal to prepare them for the journey into the wilderness. It was at a table that the story was retold. A teacher and students wondering what the coming hours would bring. A meal to prepare them for the journey into death. It is at the Lord's table that the story is remembered by people struggling to be faithful. A meal to prepare us for the journey into resurrection. It is now nine o'clock on Thursday evening. When Jesus and his disciples had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. 
And Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of the disciples said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even unto death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me.
turn our backs on him and go his way and let him get to us. Let's think of it this way. We are his. We cling to the possessions we know we have. His blessed hope. Let's think of it this way. We are his. We can sleep through the trials and the hurt of it this way. Let us remember who we are and who we can become. It is now midnight, Friday morning. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And all of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards took him over and beat him. Rock star, politician, pro athlete. Of all the people you could have been, you chose to become a servant for us. Power, wealth, divinity. Of all of the privileges you might have grasped, you chose to take hold of a cross for us. Paris, Cancun, Los Angeles, of all the roads that you might have taken, you chose the one running through Jerusalem for us. Of all the people you might have died for, 
you did. Amen. Three AM Friday morning. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the third time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Coming upon that group of asylum seekers and rough sleepers clustered on the walk, we quicken our pace and cross to the other side as quickly as we can, silently putting them at the bottom of that list labelled outsiders. When the secretary knocks on our door to let us know the single mum needing assistance is at the front door, again, we simply shake our head. Tell her sorry, but we have no resources now. As we turn back to ordering more stuff online. The little girl stands at the edge of the doorway, clutching her scuffed, faded, soft, stuffed toy in one hand, her favorite book in the other, hoping that this night, Dad might have time to put her to bed. But with an almost silent curse, we wave her away with a, I told you not to bother me. Of all the ways we can say, I do not know him. We always seem able to learn more. It is now six o'clock on Friday morning. As soon as it was morning, 
the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, it was the festival of the Jews. And at this festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. So Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! No one asked him. Not the chief priest or his bought judges, though fear would have deafened them. Not the governor, balancing political options on his decisions. Not the mob. Pockets full of nightmares, stomachs full of poverty, voices brimming with bile. No goodness or mercy flowing over their cupped hands. No one asked him. But don't you think Jesus himself would have said, maybe even whispered to himself, give them Barabbas. It's now 9 a.m. on Friday. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort of soldiers. 
and they clothed Jesus in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in mock homage to him. After thus mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't taste it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Ridiculed by his enemies, outcast of his kingdom. Deserted by his friends, God forsake him. Morning star of creation came, covered with the grit of the things of the world. Nailed to the cross, the coffin is hung, prepared by a great man, so that we might be restored to God's kingdom. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon.
At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who stood facing the cross saw that in this way Jesus breathed his last. He said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joses, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then, Pilate wondered if he were, in fact, already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When Pilate learned that he was indeed dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone down against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where the body was laid. Feet that danced through the streets of Jerusalem, welcoming the Messiah. Now softly pad the back alleys in search of shadows. Hearts that leapt with joy at the sight of David's true son. Are thrown out with Golgotha's garbage. Hands that wrapped a newborn son in bright bands of cloth. Now shroud his broken body and lay him gently, tenderly, softly in death's manger. Where glad hosannas rang out. 
There is now only the silent, weeping heart of God. A communique issued today. In the end, we have to state that no agreement was reached. His stubborn opposition to compromise was never breached. Talks went on through the night to meet Friday's deadline. Even the governor was woken early to sign. But no peace formula was found at the 11th hour between the princes of earth and of heaven, there will be no sharing of power. Every effort was made to break down his reticence, but he would not join in any talks and maintained his silence. The release of prisoners was the final opportunity it is reported that he did not take advantage of the governor's offer of clemency. There is no bilateral statement for the six o'clock news. The communique displayed says simply, he is the king of the Jews. On reflection, it is clear his agenda had been set from the start 
He planned a suicide mission against the strongholds of the heart. He did not negotiate with sin. When matters reached their head, he would not decommission his arms, but spread them wide instead. End of communique.